Hello, ladies and gentlemen. So, I was thinking for a long, long, long time now. Hmm. So everybody knows, if you don't know, that I'm going to talk about this. This is the reason why I despise the WrestleMania 30 Tanker versus Lesnar match. This is the full 100% story. If people want to know about it, because I have talked about this match, and talked about this match, and talked about this match, and honestly hated on it because it's the truth. I do not like this match. So, here's the thing. Here's the reason why I'm kind of eh about WWE now. It's it's kind of weird. It's kind of confusing. Just listen. So, and WWE, if everyone should know, The Undertaker had this infamous streak. And I will admit, when he was, you know what, 15, 18 and 0, I wasn't really that invested. I will admit. But then once he became 19, 20, 21 and 0, you know, it's like, holy shit, is this guy ever going to actually lose? And we know at when, you know, the year after he faced CM Punk, of course, we already know what happens there. But, you know, when I was really so invested, and then when he lost against Brock, I'm not going to lie, that kind of made me tune out. Like, back in the day, I was a big, bigger wrestling fan. Like, I would watch Monday Night Raw you know, smack down every single week. But then when, you know, freaking Brock broke the streak, it kind of made me turn down, you know? Like, I still tune in, watch, you know, the pay-per-views and, you know, and everything. But when that happened, you know, it really tuned me down and stuff, you know, out of WWE, to be honest. You know, and in WWE just didn't feel the same, you know, in, in a way. So, yeah. And to be honest, the, the Roman Reigns Universal Championship reign and that streak that Asuka had, to be honest, it's it's not it's not that shocking and it's not that you know special to me because I know for a fact Roman Reigns is not gonna have the fucking championship for ten years. And if he does, then yeah, I will get fucking invested. It'll be just like Tinker Streak. Like, okay, you know, who, who's going to really beat Roman? Who's going to take the belt? But I know they're not going to do that. You know, I already know they won't. And for Asuka, they already fucking ruined it. You know, they had Charlotte beat her at Mania. So, which is, who wouldn't see that coming? You know, so it's like, yeah, you know, all these other big time champions with all these reigns, it just... It doesn't hit the ball like it did with Tanker Streak because, you know, he would win every single year. And you're like, damn, you know, and you get so invested. You know, and I'm just not, like, that invested into, like, the Universal Championship reign and, and everything like that, you know. Like, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. What Roman's doing as the Tribal Chief, and it's fucking good. It's good shit. But it's like, I'm not that invested into it in a way. You know, if he, if some wrestler in WWE gets a 10-0 yearly fucking winning streak, you know, at SummerSlam or, I don't know, Russell Cock or whatever the fucking pay-per-view will be, then yeah, I'll be invested. And I'm like, holy shit, you know? And then I'll probably go back every week, tune in and shit, but that's one big reason. If, if anyone's out there wondering why I hate so much about that match, and, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, there's a lot of times that I don't watch Raw or SmackDown for two, three weeks, because I'm just not that type of fan anymore, you know, but if you're wondering and everything, this is why, this is why I despise that match, this is why that, like, I'm not as into wrestling as I once was, like, I'll still watch it, and I'll still, you know, watch the pay-per-views, you know, and everything, but, like, I honestly would watch wrestling, and I would be glued to my seat watching that shit. Now, you know, I'll watch WWE, believe it or not, 
I'll watch like Sprawl or Smackdown, watch maybe 10 to 15 minutes into it, and then I'll play fucking music on my phone or some shit as I'm just having it go in the background, not even fucking listening to the rest of it or watching the rest of it. Because again, that, that rustling, you know, years of the streak and, and everything, it's gone. You know, and I'm not going to lie, that shit really got me invested, you know. So, that's, that's the reason why, if anybody was wondering, and I know there's probably a lot of people that were, were wondering, that's why, you know, I the Undertaker streak was just so great how it was, and I'm not trying to get all buddy-buddy and butthurt and, you know, mad about it. I'm just saying, you know, so, that's why, you know, it's just... WWE will, will never be the same after they pulled that at April 6th, 2014. I remember the date. That's how much I was fucking invested in that streak. So don't give me bullshit saying, Oh no, you just dropped out of WWE. No. That's, that's how fucking invested. April 6th, 2014. I even know it was one of the last couple of matches before the pay-per-view was over with. Yeah, so, but, yeah, and, you know, they, they did that, and I'm not gonna lie, you know, there's been tons of good shit, the, the Fiend character, Bray Wyatt coming back, you know, hell, I even will admit, Goldberg destroying fucking Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series, that was shocking, that was cool, you know? And we already know how they fucking treated him, but still afterwards, you know? And then freaking the Cody Rose and Seth Rollins match, that was neat. Bobby Lashley's championship reign. The shit, again, the stuff that Roman Reigns is doing as the Tribal Chief. You know, just cool shit, you know? But in my opinion, I don't think anything will ever top what The Undertaker had. I'm just going to be honest. I, I don't even think what The Fiend had will top what The Undertaker would do with this streak. The, the matches and everything spoke and basically told you that this streak cannot be broken. I'm talking about the matches like Triple H and, you know, Undertaker, Hell in Cell, Shawn Michaels and Undertaker, Hell in Cell. Like, hell, even CM Punk and, you know, I could fucking go off the list, you know? And that's why, like, I was so invested into the streak. You know, and they just did that shit, you know, years later, because, I admit, I like Brock, I was happy as shit, seeing him destroy John Cena in that, in that matchup, I was fucking happy as shit seeing that, but, at the same time, though, if you're wondering, yeah, the reason I kind of hopped out of WWE, and I just don't get invested, or super, super excited, like I once were, you know, I'm just not, you know, and honestly, in my opinion, these most new age wrestlers are just not all that exciting. Like, in my opinion, I'm more into, like, the older shit where, you know, a guy does a couple of punches, a couple of big moves, finisher, one, two, three, you know, that stuff, the attitude era shit I love, you know? To be honest, seeing a wrestler do a 65th splash off the top rope, you know, it's cool. It's cool. But it doesn't give doesn't get me really invested like that, you know? So, or a springboard, hot fucking, I don't know, leg drop off, you know, the metal rope somehow does a flip in, I don't, you know? It doesn't really invest me like that. Like, it's cool. But that's not the type of stuff I really grew up with in a way. Somewhat yes, somewhat no. But yeah, I like these wrestlers in a way, but they just don't give me that spark like the other wrestlers that I kind of grew up with, like Tanker, Brock, you know? The only one that I will admit right now that really, really gets me invested and actually will make me sit down and watch anything about WWE is Bray Wyatt, because I will admit, you don't have to have a fucking 85-star frog splash move set and a fucking Rey Mysterio, you know, I don't know, fucking bouncy, fucking all over the ropes and shit move set to have a good match and have a good fucking character. 
And that's why, you know, he invests me so much, you know? Because I will admit, these guys doing all these frog splashes and 87,000 fucking hurricanranas and, you know, the rustlers that are like the, you know, Matt Riddles and, you know, they they don't really invest me because nowadays if you watch rustling, a lot of the rustlers in a way are kind of normal. We really don't get those supernatural, you know, rustlers like the Jason Voorhees, you know, fiend character or whatever. You know, we don't get that nowadays. And that's what always, you know, gets me invested is the guys like Boogeyman and, you know, and The Undertaker, The Old King, you know, those type of wrestlers. You know, or guys that just don't give a shit like Lesnar and Stone Cold, you know. And so, you know, like those are the wrestlers that I like to sit down and watch because... You know, in my opinion, it's fucking fun as hell seeing a supernatural wrestler come in the ring and just fuck someone up. It's fun. You know, to be honest, sometimes I get bored as shit seeing a 25-minute match and the wrestlers could be doing, you know, 85,000 moonsaults and, and everything. I get bored of that sometimes, you know? I, I just do. I'd rather watch a match where you can have a good match and not have to do... 85,000 frog splashes, and, you know, I mean, sometimes, yeah, sometimes matches can be really good, I'm not gonna lie, there's has been matches that I have seen, wrestlers have done a lot of top rope shit, and the matches are really good, I admit that, but, in my opinion, that doesn't really distract me to the screen, it just doesn't, you know, so, so if anyone was wondering, you know, yeah, like, I, that's the reason why I'm more kind of like, eh, odd wrestling, because if you really watch Raw and SmackDown, there is no fucking wrestlers that are, you know, really, you know, non-human and crap. Like, I don't really give a shit about a wrestler that's fucking, you know, hey, bro, and, you know, fucking you know, high and shit, like, yeah, Matt Riddle's good at what he does, and I won't sit there and fucking, you know, talk shit, he's a good wrestler, but I'm not always invested into a wrestler that's gonna sit there and be like, hey, bro, what's up, man, <laughs> hey, bro, RKO, because, you know, it's not gonna fucking invest me, you know, like, he's funny, I'm not gonna lie, Riddle's fucking funny, he's a funny-ass wrestler, you know, and he's good, I'm not gonna sit there, he's good, but the guys that really invest me are, like, the Bray Wyatts, the Fiends, you know, the Undertakers, the Canes, it's always cool seeing someone that's just dark and disappears in the middle of, you know, the darkness and shit, it's, it's always cool, you know, that's what invests me, you know, wrestlers like that, you know, I don't really give a shit about having or seeing a 25-minute match. It can be five stars, I'll admit. And at the end, I'll be like, oh, yeah, this match is over. with. Let's go on to the next, you know? So, yeah, but there's only special occasions where I'm like, oh, shit, you know, when a wrestler, you know, does these flips. And it's only a special occasion where it actually gets me invested now. I know I kind of said it doesn't, but it's a special occasion you know, so, but besides that, yeah, like, when you see that shit every week, seeing a wrestler do a flip and do a, you know, a 95 frog splash every single week, it kind of gets boring after a while, but then when, when I see, you know, a demonic character out of nowhere pop up, I, I'm like this to the fucking screen, you know, so, yeah, like, you know, so, and it's been proven that you can have good matches and you don't need a fucking, you know, do, you know, the fucking, I don't know what it's called, the fucking Charlotte Moon, you know, floppy fucking move off the top rope that she does, you know? So, you don't need to do moves like that to have a good match. Hell, in my opinion, that Stone Cold versus Kevin Owens WrestleMania match, I thought that was going to be fucking horrible. For what it was, that was actually okay. That was actually okay for what that was, you know? In my opinion, it was alright. So, 
you know, like, <clears throat> heck, some of the recent Goldberg matches, I'm not even gonna lie, and I know a lot of people are kind of, are gonna kind of be like, eh, it's fucking bad, but the recent ones that he had with, like, you know, Bobby and, you know, Roman, those are pretty good, those are good for what they were, you know, and I'll sit there and watch matches like that, you know? You do a couple of kicks, a couple of punches, a couple of big time moves. It's, you know, good. You don't always got to do a crazy 95, you know, 80 man fucking, you know, move set. Hell, the only time I would get invested if someone does a fucking move like that is like Braun Strowman or some shit. If I see Braun Strowman doing a... A 95,000 Rey Mysterio moonsault in the air fucking splash without breaking the ring and shit. I will get invested. Come on, you, you can already predict as well when Rey Mysterio or someone small like him can do moves like that. You know? It's not exciting, it's not shocking, because they can do shit like that. Like the ricochets. And The only time I will get invested... Really invested if I if there's a, a wrestler that's the size of Big Show, you know, or you know, Mark Henry and they can do, you know, sixty five thousand splash off the top fucking rope like this shit. Let me fucking show you. There's Braun fucking Strowman. You know, Braun Strowman can do a fucking wrestling move like this and shit. Fucking and then I'll stand on his feet or some crap fucking you know, then, then I'll get invested. Then I'll get really invested. How would you get someone like that, Vince? And I mean, from once, how would you do it? Yeah, we need more horror movie characters in WWE. Yeah, 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 yeah